二零二零年第三条题目系讲眼睛同埋神经系统嘅，咁你喺呢幅图咧就见到有两张相同埋一个神经途径啦。一开始啦，当我哋只眼未接受强光刺激嘅时候咧，瞳孔系较为大嘅。当受到强光刺激啦，刺激咗视网膜入面嘅感受器，再经过神经元 P 将神经脉冲传递到脑袋，然后再经过神经元 Q 同埋 R 将神经脉冲传递到虹膜环肌同埋虹膜放射机。出嚟嘅反應就係瞳孔喺強光嘅照射底下，佢係縮細咗嘅。而 part A 佢就問我哋啦，參考翻上面呢一個神經途徑，第一部分就要我哋寫出喺視網膜入面嘅兩款嘅感受器。呢條題目都非常之直白噶啦，就係、是、問翻視網膜兩款嘅光感受器，亦即係感光細胞啦，分別就係視椎細胞同埋視幹細胞啦。第二部分咧就要我哋寫出 Q 同埋 R 所代表嘅神經元嘅種類啦。呢條題目都係非常之直白，因為我哋見得到 Q 同埋 R 呢兩個神經元係接駁住反應器，分別係虹膜環肌同埋虹膜放射肌。運動神經元就係將中央神經系統所傳嚟嘅神經脈衝傳去反應器，所以答案咧就係運動神經元啦。然後去到 Part B 啦，描述虹膜兩組肌肉係點樣合作嘅，以達至上圖所示嘅瞳孔大細嘅改變，即係由大去到細。然後寫出呢個反應嘅重要性。嗱，呢條題目咧，你見到其實有好幾部分嘅。第一啦，就係呢兩款肌肉，虹膜環肌同埋虹膜放射肌點樣合作啦，從而啦帶動到瞳孔嘅大細嘅變化。其實題目係冇講到明啦，瞳孔係變大定變細噶嘛？咁即係話個改變個 change 咧，你要喺答案入面提及嘅，就係由大變細嘅。然後啦，瞳孔由大變細有咩咁重要呢？咁所以呢一 part 咧就考翻我哋啦，視覺調節嘅機制同埋瞳孔嘅功能啦。過往咧我都拍咗一段片咧，就專係講瞳孔變大變細，究竟點樣可以一步步去建構你嘅答案嘅。面對任何有關於反應嘅題目咧，第一 part 我哋一定要留意嘅就係、是、究竟個人面對緊一個乜嘢嘅情況，就係、是、面對強光，然後我哋就要去描述翻。虹膜环肌同埋虹膜放射肌佢哋之间嘅协调咯，咁之前瞳孔变大变细呢段片咧都教过大家噶啦。由于呢两种嘅肌肉系对抗性嘅肌肉，所以啦，一个收缩嘅时候，另一个就会放松。所以啦，你去谂翻个瞳孔系个窿嚟噶嘛，你就用环状肌肉去做个理解咧，就最容易噶啦。而家我要个瞳孔收细，所以啦，环状肌肉就要收缩。而同一時間，放射機就要放鬆，俾佢拉入去，而導致到瞳孔收細 （constriction）。你唔寫 constriction， 你可以寫 pupil size becomes smaller， 瞳孔大細變細都得嘅。然後就要講下啦，面對強光，點解瞳孔要收細啊？就係、是、為咗減少過量嘅光線進入眼睛，呢、这個係瞳孔收細之後第一個會發生嘅事嚟嘅。而去到最後尾就要答翻重要性啦。瞳孔喺強光底下收細，就係、是、避免有過量嘅光線進入去眼睛，去過分刺激咗視幹細胞同埋視椎細胞，又或者去避免破壞咗我哋嘅感光細胞。温下書嘅咧就快快睇翻呢段片咯。跟住去到拍斯啦，就過渡到去到神經系統啦。当一个人昏迷不醒嘅时候，医护人员咧会评估上述嘅神经途径嘅反应，即系话啦，你平时喺电视剧见到啲医生咧攞个电筒照一照个病人嘅眼睛，照完之后啦，哎呀冇反应添，跟住就会冚白布 certify 正式死亡啦。咁其实医护人员咧就系以确认呢一个神经途径系咪仍然能够运作咧，去判断呢个人死咗未嘅。咁呢个评估啦，反映咗呢个神经协调具有咩性质咧？咁其實第一個問題你就諗下啦，當一個人昏迷不醒嘅時候，喺個腦嘅邊一部分係唔能夠正常運作嘅呢？你篤佢佢又冇反應，你冚佢一巴佢又唔痛嘅，其實就係個大腦係不能夠正常運作緊，所以呢個動作係不由大腦所去決定嘅。即係話瞳孔變大變細呢，係一個不隨意嘅動作，同埋係一個反射嘅動作，而佢係受到我麥多拉奧朗加塔。所去控制住嘅，所以你会知道点解医生可以用呢个方法去判断嗰个人死咗未？因为麦多拉奥朗加塔仲有另一个功能，就系、是、控制呼吸同埋心跳。如果控制瞳孔大细嘅呢个反应做唔到，亦即系有机会脑干死亡。咁脑干死亡嘅话啦，呼吸心跳亦都进行唔到，咁、那、嗰个人就真系死翘翘啦。
好，又嚟到一點出發啦。今次呢條題目呢，係講瞳孔大細嘅。有關於瞳孔大細有啲咩嘅概念，大家要知呢。第一啦，就係、是、面對住光度嘅變化啦。第二啦，瞳孔大細係受到虹膜所控制嘅，因為瞳孔只係一個窿，佢係受到虹膜嘅肌肉所去控制。咁當中有啲咩日常例子呢？第一個啦，就係揀太陽眼鏡啦。你揀一副好深色嘅太陽眼鏡，咁就 O K 啊。定還是要揀一副能夠反射紫外光嘅太陽眼鏡，咁先叫做好嘅情況呢。又或者啦，我哋用閃光燈去影相就會出現紅眼。而家呢，其實有好多嘅相機呢，即使佢開閃光燈呢，都唔會出現紅眼嘅現象㗎啦。啊，點解呢？你都要學識，喎，你都要溫下書。喎。有關於瞳孔受到虹膜嘅肌肉所控制呢，咁啊有環機同埋放射機啦。咁究竟啦，控制咗瞳孔大細有啲咩嘅重要性呢？咁你睇返瞳孔變大變細呢段片啦，同埋記緊返啦。由於今次要問嘅係重要性，咁所以直線抽擊答題法呢。都系非常有用嘅，然后咧就去到视觉调节啦，唔单止调控瞳孔大细，仲有望远望近都系好常见嘅题目嚟嘅。加上啦，今次呢条题目咧系由眼睛过渡到去到神经系统嘅，由于今次控制瞳孔大细，又或者望远望近咧，其实系一个不随意嘅动作嚟嘅，嚟就要将佢同个神经系统啊、脑嘅功能啊去拉上关系。又或者將佢再推前咗一步，就係、是、睇病學拜屙啦。如果腦嘅某一部分，麥多拉 （Oblong Gata） 係受損壞嘅，咁究竟你個人仲做唔做到呢啲反應呢 o t o o question three is about eyes and the nervous system. This diagram shows a neural pathway involved in the coordination of pupil size when the human eye is exposed to the strong light. So you can see from this diagram, there are two pictures to show the appearance of the pupil before exposed to the strong light. You can see that the size of the pupil is a bit larger, and after the receptor in the retina is stimulated by the light, and there will be a nerve impulse transmitted by the neuron P to the brain, the central nervous system, and then neuron Q and R they will transmit the nerve impulse to the circular muscle of the iris and the radial muscle of the iris. And finally, you can see the response. The pupil size will become smaller during the exposure to strong light. And part A. With reference to the above neuron pathway, part one state the two types of receptor located in the retina. This question is very straightforward. We need to recall the photoreceptor in the retina, and there are two types of photoreceptors: rod cell and cone cells. And part two state the types of neuron represented by the Q and R. It needs us to recall the neuron which are connected to the effector. Motor neuron transmit the nerve impulses from the CNS central nervous system, the brain, to the effectors. So an example of the effector, circular muscle and the radial muscle is a type of effector. Therefore, the answer is motor neuron. And then for part B, describe how two sets of the iris muscle work together, circular muscle and radial muscle of the iris, to bring about the change in the pupil size. Question doesn't tell you the change in the pupil size. It just shows you the picture. Therefore, you need to mention the change of the pupil size. The pupil size changed from big to small in the answer. And then you need to state the significance, the importance of this response. It means that you need to tell me when the pupil size changed from big to small, so any benefit for the eyes. So you need to recall the mechanism of the eye accommodation and recall the function of the pupil. So you can watch this video for revision. For the whole scaffolding, first part, when we are doing the question of the irritability or even for the whole meal status, we need to realize the situation where the person is facing. Now, the person is facing the strong light. And then describe the coordination between the circular muscle and the radial muscle of the iris because it's talking about the ultimate goal for us to face this situation. Now we are facing the strong light, and the ultimate goal is to make the pupil become smaller. So what is the mechanism? That's the coordination. Circular muscle of the iris contract. While the radial muscle of the iris relax, this pair of the muscle, this pair of the muscle, they are antagonistic muscle, opposing muscle. When one is contracting, the other one will be relaxing. For you just remember one muscle, and then you will remember another muscle, and then the pupil size will become smaller. Constriction of the pupil, 
And what is the change in the amount of light entering the eyes? It is a direct change to reduce the amount of light entering the eyes. And what is the importance, the benefit of this change in the pupil size? We can prevent the overstimulation of the rock cells and the cone cells, or prevent the damage of the light sensitive cells. Surely you can specify rock cells and cone cells. And part C, we talk about the nervous system. If someone falls unconscious, the response of above neural pathway will be assessed to confirm if this pathway is still functional what does this assessment tell you about the nature of this neural coordination? This question, we need this thinking logic. If someone falls unconscious, which part of the brain cannot function normally? Surely it is the cerebrum. Because when someone is falling unconscious, even you beat him or beat her, he or she doesn't feel anything, right? So it shows that this neural coordination doesn't involve the cerebrum. But which part of the brain is involved? The medulla oblongata is involved because this reaction, this response is involuntary action and a reflex action. And one more thing I would like to mention is that by doing this assessment, we can even know that whether the patient dies or not. Because for the medulla oblongata, it also controls other involuntary action, for example, breathing and heartbeat. So what if the pupil size of the patient cannot be changed under the strong light? So it shows that the medulla oblongata may be damaged, may die already. Therefore, the patient cannot control the breathing and heartbeat at all, and then he or she will die. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question, it talks about the pupil size, and it checks us two concept, the change of the light intensity, and the pupil size is controlled by the iris muscle. For the pupil size, any daily life case. For example, how can we choose a good sunglass? We choose the dark color glass or we choose the glass it can reflect or filter the UV light. Or when we are using the flash when taking the photo, there will be red eyes. So what is the reason behind that? For the iris muscle control, we need to mention the circular muscle and the radial muscle. And we need to know the importance of the controlling pupil size. So you need to watch the video for the controlling pupil size for revision. And when we are talking about the importance, you also need to recall the concept of the strict to the point. And apart from the control of the pupil size, we also have another type of eye accommodation, which is focusing on near or distant objects. So you can also watch these two videos for revision. And for the eyes accommodation, it's an involuntary action, and we need to relay it to our brain function, and even for the disease approach, uh, which part of our brain is damaged, and then which response we cannot or we can still perform.